ISDN. Um, after the analog systems of telephony we've been using for 150 years were set up, we had bigger problems than um, I would like a dial tone and something to ring in a single office. Um, we have this uh, scenario where businesses have more than one phone user, um, many, many times more than. Uh, there's a phone in every home, so all consumers expect to be able to use the phone to get in touch with the businesses they buy things from, not just their friends and family. So you have call centres, which 50 years ago, there was no such thing as a call centre. Um, the moment you're trying to get 50 people in a room able to make a call, call and speak to people, you then come in, in contact with the problem we were talking about earlier, phone number. How do you have one phone number for 50 people if an analog line has a first one number attached to it? So you can work out ways to solve that. And the other one is, how do you get 50 lines into a building? Um, there are a couple of issues that you run into straight away. One of them is the physical. Um, it's just a pain in the arse routing all those pieces of wire. And you get to a point where there's enough pieces of wire coming in that you need seriously big conduits to get them in there. Then you've got physics behind it. Um, you put an alternating current down a piece of copper and it's emitting an electromagnetic um, frequency. If you put an alternating electromagnetic field next to a piece of copper, then you're creating the flow of current through that piece of copper. Um, so you imagine you put two pieces of copper with alternating frequencies of magnetic field through them, they're both talking to each other. They're both altering the flow of electrons through each other. It's called crosstalk. And there are ways to try and reduce it, but you can't remove it. It's the simple physics of electric. So you can put insulation in, but every time you do this, you're now making more expensive, more fiddly, um, more um, difficult to maintain cabling that takes up more space. You've gone from we had a bundle of 50 pieces of copper going into a business, and that took up a, you know, an inch diameter bore conduit. Now it's 10 times the size. And at the longer the distance, the bigger the problem. Well, eventually you get to the stage where you need to look for something different, something that doesn't have those problems. Um, and those problems were overcome by something called ISDN, uh, Integrated Services Digital Network. Um, the point of ISDN was to conquer this, I need more than one channel I need more than one um, user for the same phone service in a building. Um, and I need something more intelligent than phone rings at the end of a piece of wire. You need some way of being able to distribute those calls, some logic of who's able to answer a particular call, how the numbers are mapped to different users, how users can call each other within the building without going, you know, sending the call straight outside to the PSTN and then back in again. Um, and it, you know, it, it became, there's a box called a PBX, Private Branch Exchange, which is, in functionality, it replicates some of the exchange, the, the equipment that BT has down the street somewhere in your town that manages how your service works. And it takes some of that intelligence further up towards the customer so that they can have internal calls without seeing the outside network. They can build their own logic about how the phone system works. They can add in extra services like time of day rules, they can have it read messages to people, record voicemail, record all the calls, whatever it happens to be. Um, but all of this requires something more complicated than analog PSDN lines. And the ISDN system is a way of using four cores of pop copper instead of two, but to deliver 30 calls simultaneously instead of one. So a massive efficiency uh, upgrade in terms of the physical cabling required um, now, it requires a different quality of copper, so not necessarily a like-for-like -like switch, but it enables something that wasn't possible before. You know, I can say I will deliver you 120 phone lines and there's 16 pieces of copper instead of 120. It makes feasible things that just you couldn't consider pre previously. Um, all of this is done by um, plesiosyncrasy, time slicing, so rather than have a real analogue signal sent down that piece of copper like you would um, a microphone connected to the end of a speaker with a battery, the most simple method of broadcasting your voice and amplifying it. Instead of doing that, you slice time up into milliseconds and you switch between all the calls and you buffer the other 19 slices of time worth and you squeeze it down that pipe very quickly to make sure you can get you know, 20 milliseconds worth of audio down one millisecond of time slice.
So it's like pausing a YouTube video to let it load before you actually play it. And then yeah, you get but then the playing it at 20 times the speed. Yeah. So you get you could watch 10 videos as long as you're willing to, and able to absorb the information 10 times as quickly. Um, and that's exactly what IFCN is doing. Um, it, it's not exactly complicated um, once you've worked out that it can be done. But what it means is you're also stuck now in a particular standard. Um, the ISDN standard, there's two flavours of it, one that's used in America and one that's used in Europe. Um, so people have, uh, when you get ISDN lines, they, they have E1s and T1s. Um, the American one is the T1, and it provides 24 channels of voice or data. The European one is the E1, and 30 channels. Slightly different amount of bandwidth on them. No idea why they chose to have two different standards, but typifies Americans. Um, <laughs> And you have these two standards, you can switch between them, you can get devices to be able to do that. Essentially, once they go through the PSTN, they're talking the same language anyway per channel, and um, it's just different ways of presenting the same thing. In this, in this country, we had ISDN 30 and ISDN 2. We still have them today, they're not destroyed yet, but soon to be gone. I, and the, as the name suggests, ISDN 30, 30 channels, ISDN 2, two channels. Then each channel is... I think 64 kilobytes. That adds up. 64 kilobytes a second times 30 channels, two megabytes. Yeah. So an ISDN 30 is two meg. You could deliver that as voice or data. People had ISDN leased lines based on that, and you'd have a two meg leased line, two meg in each direction, um, which was fast back in the day. Um, not so much anymore. And that was the way business was done. You know cash machines, they would have an ISDN2 in them, not anymore obviously. Um, CCTV was built to be working on ISDN lines as well, if it was digital. Um, and that was the standard way you transmitted data if you needed to guarantee it arrived at the other end. To this day, in fact, radio broadcasts and TV remote broadcasts are typically done over ISDN. So you have to fit whatever you want into a 2 meg ser service, or find a way of bonding more than one. Um, it, it, the fact that it's the PSTN, it's the public network, and BT has such coverage means that you're more interested in some cases of the fact that you can guarantee getting service than you are in what service it is and it, it's simplicity. Can I get an ISDN there? Of course you can. Mm. Everywhere can, near enough. Mm. So that's the way that TV worked. You know, we want an outside broadcast BT, same day I want a socket there, plug into it, it'll get sent off to headquarters and distributed for the news. Uh, still happens today. Mm. 